mind, body, and soul. How to manage your mind and spirit as your body goes together. One cannot be isolated from the other. The answer is yes. So this is medicine of the future. Mind, body, and has three legs and if you remove one of these you see what will happen. Either the table is going to fall down or at best it may be wobbly. And if you take the second leg out then it's obvious. It will fall on its face. Human health is a very similar situation. We have three parts to our self as a person. One is your body, then is your mind, and your spirit. If you pull one of these legs out, you know that very badly, very quickly. Every emotion, every feeling, your mind is working behind it. Body is just like a mask, think of it like a mask. The real person is somewhere within us. And that if that is not fixed, there is a problem. So think of this analogy like the mantra or the prayer that you say before every seminar. Everything we talk about is a very, very small pixel in the scheme of things. When you're watching TV, the picture that you see, it's nothing but hundreds of thousands of tiny little dots. Some of, some of them are darker than others. When they're put together, it looks like a picture. Actually, there's nothing on the TV. It's pixels. So understanding different aspects of life and health and mind and body and spirit and soul are those tiny little pixels and when they are put together, all of a sudden, a picture emerges. So I'd like you to walk out of this door today after listening about hormones. And this is a very tiny picture in that picture. So the picture will not but become clear today. If you are asking, do I have to attend these 1,000 seminars to get the picture? The answer is yes. I know that's not very practical. So everything we talk about is going to describe a very small facet, an aspect, an orientation of our health and illness. Health is not absence of disease. I think you heard about that cliche. Health is not absence of disease. You, you can say, well, I'm 55 years old. I don't have blood pressure, don't have diabetes. I exercise every day. You know, I'm healthy. But if you go home and think about it, you will begin to see that you have problems. You have anxiety, maybe you don't, don't sleep well, maybe you are worried about your children going to college, maybe you are worried about your finances. How to manage your mind and spirit and your body goes together. One cannot be isolated from the other. Today we are going to talk about male and female menopause. And because of the predominance of women in this audience, I wonder how much I should talk about male and menopause. A lot. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Menopause, both for men and women, is a, is a global change in your body. It's not just um, uh, hot flushes and night sweats that you hear about. It's a global change in your health at a certain stage in your life. And the symptoms that become manifest, they are many. And I can blurt out like 10, 15, 20 of them, and then I kind of have to start thinking about what else. Uh, heart flushes, night sweats, difficulty sleeping, um, getting very easily irritated, depression, anxiety, hair loss, dry skin. Um, it starts to affect different parts of your body. I think it will serve a good purpose if I read out this to you very quickly. 
cold flushes. You can have cold flushes. I'm talking about we females, we are talk, starting with the female menopause discussion. Bouts of rapid heartbeat palpitations. You can have mood swings, sudden tears, emotional reactions to minor situations, trouble sleeping, I already mentioned that. Irregular pre periods, that's very common to, uh, for premenopause to uh, manifest in the forms of irregularity of periods, heavy bleeding, the no bleeding for two months. There is no pattern, you lose that monthly pattern. Loss of libido, sex drive, dry vagina, result, it results in a painful intercourse. Then crashing, fatigue, anxiety, anxiety, stress, feelings of dread, apprehension, and doom, difficulty concentrating, disorientation, mental confusion, disturb, disturbing memory lapses, incontinence, itchy, crawly skin, aching sore joints, muscles, and tendons, increased tension in muscles, breast tenderness, breast swelling, soreness, headaches, migraines, gastrointestinal distress, indigestion, sudden bouts of bloating, <coughs> depression, exacerbation of any exist existing conditions that you already have, increase in allergies, weight gain, hair loss or thinning, dizziness, lightheadedness, episodes of loss of balance, changes in body odor, electric shock sensation under the skin, tightening in the extremities, gum problems, increased bleeding, is that good enough? You hear <laughs> Burning tongue, osteoporosis, you all know that, your bones thin out, brittle finger nails, which peel and break easily, internal shaking, tremors like feelings, Acne, you can have other skin eruptions, itching widely and erratic rashes, shoulder pain, joints, arthritis develops, heart pain, a feeling of pain in the area of the heart, acid reflux, heartburn, the acid comes back into the mouth, difficulty digesting certain foods, and then there are certain onset of diseases such as slow thyroid called hypothyroidism, diabetes kicks in, Etc. Et well, it's part of aging because uh, the gums and the teeth haven't used them for 40, 50 years. Eventually, every organ system is going to um, start to uh, deteriorate. Remember, some of these things are coincidental with menopause because we have a wear and tear. One day in the upcoming seminars, I will talk about how we die. You know, you uh, do you ever wonder? Is there a gene that turns on and we say, okay, it's time to die, and we start to deteriorate? There is no such gene. But we will have a discussion how we eventually die. Even if we try to fight it, we eventually die. There's only swallow so long we can live. But in the future, things are going to change completely. There is a seminar on that, and you won't believe if I tell you some things. They are not based on fantasy or speculation. They are based on what's already going on. It, your grandchildren, it won't be, it will be very common for them to live to be 150 or 200 years. That's happening right now. They are printing your organs. The computers are printing your bladder, heart valve. So if your heart goes bad, they will print another one. It's already happening, already being transplanted. So this is medicine of the future. So, um, so there are, you see that there are many uh, symptoms of uh, uh, menopause is not just a uh, heart flush and night sweats, but it changes your body and it starts to affect your mind. I want to briefly describe what are the risks Maybe before we discuss risk and benefits of hormones, let me briefly define for you what is synthetic versus bioidentical hormones. Because I'm sure all of you have that question in your mind. Synthetic hormones are basically, they were derived from collecting lots and lots of male's urine from other mammals, and then they extract those hormones, uh, such as estrogen and progesterone and testosterone, and uh, 
We make pills out of that. It's very simple. In, uh, two, in the year 2000, a study results came out, which was being conducted for 12 years, from early 1980s to the year 2000. It took uh, 12 years to complete that study. It, it was called Women Health Initiative. It was conducted in Scandinavia uh, on 45,000 women that were taking hormones. That's why it took so long to do that research. And the results came out that actually synthetic hormones they may have some benefits, but they can also cause breast cancer, stroke, heart attack, blood clots, and those who still have your uterus can cause uterine cancer, endometrial cancer. But that study was done in a specific hormone called Prempro, which a lot of you might have been given way back by your doctors. Since that time, we became very cautious about using synthetic hormones. Although the study said that you can use them in small doses up to two or three years, as long as you don't use the doses that were being used before. You can use them very small doses for symptomatic reasons, such as quality of life, style, heart, death rate of heart, flushes and night sweats. But if you use them over a certain dose or over a certain time period, then the risk goes up. So up to two years with no doses, there's no risk. So if you've already had blood clots, can you take them? Absolutely not. But what do you do then? Well, there are uh, bioidentical hormones can be used transdermal from through the skin because the risk of blood clot goes up if the medication goes through your liver. The liver deals with your clotting mechanism, clotting factors, that's what liver makes. So when the marriage, everything you put in your mouth gets processed by the liver before it circulates in the bloodstream. So you have to bypass the liver mechanism. It's called bypass. That's how you do. go through the skin, either through the muscle or creams on the skin. Then you can minimize the risk. I am cautious in giving even bioidentical hormones to women who have regular blood clot several times. Even though studies show that there is no risk in using bioidentical hormones. I want to tell you briefly what bioidentical hormones are. Bioidentical, the word bioidentical is a marketing term, believe it or not. A lot of you will be disappointed in listening to this. Oh my God, I thought it was something real. It is real. It turns out that this term has been abused everywhere. Pharmacies all over the country, doctors all over the country say we use bioidentical hormone. A lot of these people actually, if you ask them, um, what is bioidentical hormone? All of a sudden they are at a loss. They don't know what to tell you. Just because something comes from a plant source or extracted from soya plants or uh, yam or cotton seed or sesame seed or and the herbs like red clover leaf, it doesn't automatically make it bioidentical. Although they are much safer. The rationale behind that is that in some countries, especially on the eastern countries such as Japan, 